Hello and welcome to this Science Vision video. Now in this video we're looking at valence electrons. I call this part one, it's going to be a part, it's going to be a two-part video. In part two we're looking at more advanced stuff such as um, the subshells. Okay, so this one's going to be the easy stuff, straightforward stuff on valence electrons. So let's ask ourselves a question. So what are valence electrons? Well, by definition, valence electrons are those electrons in the outermost orbits. We could also refer to those as the highest principal energy level. The what? The highest principal energy level. I think we just need a bit of recap here. Let's go back and think about the basic structure of our atom. Now here's our atom, and as you know, the atom consists of a nucleus. Now the nucleus has got these positive protons and these neutrons that have no charge. Also, on the outside, we've got electrons. So what do you know about electrons? Have a think. Well, they move around the nucleus. They're negatively charged. They're tiny, okay? But they cover a lot of space. Most of the space in the atoms occupy bodies, orbits, or shells. The volume their orbits occupy determines how big the atom is. they are virtually no mass. So each electron is about a two thousandth the mass of a proton or neutron. And they occupy shells around the nucleus. Now these shells, sometimes in some books they're referred to as orbits, in other books as energy levels or shells, all one and the same thing. Okay. Now, how do you know how many electrons an atom has? Well, it's a very easy way of finding that, and that's to look at the periodic table. And the key thing here we're looking at is the symbol and these two numbers here, 23 for sodium, 11 sodium. The top number is the mass number, and this gives us the total number of protons and neutrons. The bottom number is one we are particularly interested in. This is the atomic number. This tells us how many protons we've got, but also it tells us how many electrons we've got. So here in sodium, we've got 11 electrons. Now in some periodic tables, you find these numbers reversed. So the big ones at the bottom and the small ones at the top. It doesn't matter. But always remember the smaller one, as in here, is the atomic number. The bigger one is the mass number. So we know how many protons it's got, which is 11. We know how many electrons it's got, which is 11. How many neutrons has it got? Well, neutrons is given by the difference between this number and this number. So 23 minus 11 is 12. So sodium, we've got 11 protons, 11 electrons, and 12 neutrons. Now, it's very easy to find out how many electrons. All we've got to do is look at the atomic number, which is always the smaller of the two numbers. And it doesn't matter as I said which around these are. So here we got, was it 10 elements per table? Magnesium, lithium, argon, cobalt, lead, iron, tin, SN, yes, tin, chlorine, potassium, and radium. Now, I want you now to pause the video. I want you to fill in now, please, how many electrons you think there are in these elements. Okay, so promise you'll pause it. I'll pause now. Okay, we'll check our answer, shall we? So lithium, 3, argon, 18, cobalt, 27, lead, 82, iron, 26, tin, 50, chlorine, 17, potassium, 19, radium, 88. Now, that wasn't so difficult, was it? So let's go back to our periodic table a minute. Let's just recap on some of the um, structures. Now these top ones here are called groups. So vertical columns there are called groups. So we've got one, group one, group two, group three, group four, group five, group six, group seven. That should be there, shouldn't it? Group seven, over that number there, seven. And this is eight or zero. So we've got groups. Also we've got what we call periods. So for the periods we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now these are really, really useful because we want to know how many electrons are there in the outermost shell and how many valence electrons. Also we want to know how many shells or energy levels there are. And we can tell all this from the periodic table and it is very, very easy. The number of valence electrons is given by the group number. So in all these here, these have got one electron in the outermost shell, i.e. one valence electron. In this group here, they've got two. We're not going to bother just a moment about the middle bit, the transition metals. We'll do that next time in part two. Three for these guys here, four for these guys here, five for these, six, seven, and eight. So now we know 
how many valence electrons there are in these elements. And to find out how many shells or periods we've got, we simply look at the period number. So here there's only one period. Here there's two. Here there's three. And so on. And again, next video will expand upon this. But for any element, we can say, let's take for example, silicon. Silicon's in period three. Silicon is also in group one, two, three, four. So silicon has got three shells or orbitals, and in the outermost orbital there are four, and the group, electrons. Look at potassium. We know potassium has got four shells, because it's in period four, and it's got one electron outermost shell. Let's think about oh, argon. Argon has got three shells, and its outermost shell contains eight. Its outermost shell is in fact four. So no excuse now, you can work out very, very quickly, very simply, how many valence electrons there are around each nucleus. Okay, so the valence electrons, outermost shell, you now know how to work it out. Okay? So, thanks for watching and listening this video. And don't forget, you can now get the complete IGCSE biology and chemistry course on video by just visiting this site here. Okay, that's http www igcsescienceforces.com So thanks for watching, thanks for listening and I'll be back again very very soon.